Good afternoon. I'm here to share with you the power of small. Many of you may wonder why small matters. We live in an age where everything is big, Big Mac, Twin Towers. But I assure you that small is beautiful, small is impactful, and small is transformational. And that's what I would like to leave you with at the end of this talk. Let me start with some numbers. What does this number mean? These numbers are things that are very important in our lives. It talks about urbanization. The world was 3% urbanized 200 years ago, in 1800. It took 150 years to reach 30% urbanization. In the next 80 years, that number will reach 60%. 60% of humanity will be in an urban environment. The economist featured this and said the world has gone to town. It's an apt cover story. We live in an age of cities. We live in a civilization of cities. And it's no different here in Malaysia. 100 years ago, 11% of Malaysian population was in urban environments. Today, it took nearly 50 years to reach 28%. But within the next four decades, subsequent four decades, that number has increased to 75%. 75% of Malaysians today live in an urban environment. That is staggering change. It took America 200 years, what Malaysia has done in 100 years, more so in the last four decades. This is the kind of pace of urbanization that we are seeing all across Asia. There are many new cities that has emerged. Where in 1950, there were only nearly only 80 cities of 1 million each that existed. But that number within the turn of the century became four times more. And the next decade, that number is going to become extremely significant. Why does cities matter? Why are people going to cities? Cities have become the new engines of growth. Cities have become the new engines of prosperity. It is in cities that we see productivity. It is in cities that we see innovation taking place. Cities, though account for only 2% of land mass, generate 80% of global GDP. We live in an age where the fault line of competition is no longer between nations. Competition is now shifted between cities. New York is competing with London and not America versus France. Malaysia is compete, not competing with Korea. It's Kuala Lumpur competing with Bangkok. Jakarta or Seoul. And in the age where cities are competing, the key to competition is about talent, it's about people. People make cities, whether they're successful or not. People choose cities, and that's the key. When people choose cities, they choose places that are livable, cities that are safe for their families, cities that are having good quality of life, fresh air, walkable, and so on. The challenge lies then for city managers to see how to bring about that kind of changes if they really want to be competing in the global front of competition. But then again, the kind of challenges that city faces is extreme. The cities have now grown and have become very significant. An example would be Jakarta has a population of 30 million, same as what Tokyo has. And there's a total number of population of Malaysia in one city. So the kind of pressures cities are seeing is extreme. They are bursting at the seams, and issues that cities face are extremely challenging, from lack of connectivity, urban sustainability, as well as quality of life and underdevelopment, squalor, and so on. But then there's a lot of demands. People who move to cities are demanding better quality public spaces, green environments, People are talking about bike shares, as you can see all around the different cities where cycles have started to emerge. And these are kinds of new demands that we are seeing today. The question then arises, what do we really need to do to bring this change? While these changes are demanded, there are new issues that have emerged in cities too. Urban sustainability. Cities guzzle 
nearly three quarters of energy that's used in Earth today. It generates 70% of carbon emissions. It generates three quarters of urban waste. Now, the question then arises, how are we going to continue on that basis? How are we going to live as a human civilization in cities if our cities are not sustainable? And that's the story of how the challenge of cities today, while it's about a place of hope for better quality of life in terms of upward mobility, it also faces challenges for urban sustainability. And this is the kind of feature that we see all through the cities in Asia particularly. Smog, we saw this in Kuala Lumpur the past few weeks. Uh, I'm sure this is fresh in our minds. Congestion is an everyday feature in our cities. Uh, most of us probably commuting at least two to three hours in congestion. And cities have become not walkable. You know, I was I, staying somewhere close to KLCC. It would be very difficult for me to walk to this hall. And, and that's the kind of shape of things to come, where no longer cities are being built for people to walk, but cities are being built on the basis of zooming around in cars. One in two Malaysians today are obese, and it's no different in other Asian cities. Most of the cities are going through extreme challenges in the sense that they face kind of pressures that are unseen for. So this is an example of kind of changes that cities are doing, uh, where we are seeing major changes that city leaders have made this is an example of highways are being taken out to be, and to, re, to bring back rivers that existed below the highways. And this is an example in Seoul. Seoul had lost its soul when it had the highway come across, cutting across the city. But when it brought back the river, it became alive and it's become a spectacular place. We see this all too often in Boston, in San Francisco and major cities around the world. Or Car parks being transformed to become great public spaces. This is an example in Millennial Park in Chicago, where we saw the example of the car park transformed to become a major public space. The car, car park went underneath the ground, and, it, and this became a major destination that people in, who visit Chicago end up going to. And this is a place where the city has brought back its soul. Closer home, we have seen how Singapore over the last five decades has become a model of urban sustainability, a place of hope, and a major change. This is again another example that it doesn't need to be only about expensive engineering works. It's also about small changes. This is an example of New York where we saw a simple intervention of bringing uh, chairs to the street, pedestrianizing the street. This is 42nd Street in New York on every day, on every day that this is how it looked like. The mayor decided to, to buy chairs and put it on the street, close the street, and eventually the whole street was pedestrianized. Today, if you go to 42nd Street, there's no cars. It's only chairs all laid out, and people are enjoying the, the public space. Small things can lead to change, and that's what we believe. But this change does not need to be done only by governments. This is an example of another project in New York where the west side of New York, Manhattan, uh, unused railroad infrastructure that was uh, lying for 50 years, not used. Um, the city government wanted to dismantle it. Two citizens then decided to salvage this, to transform this, to become a major linear park and brought a whole new life to this part of Manhattan, the west side. And it has become a spectacular place of New York today. In fact, one reason why New York has been voted as one of the most dynamic cities. Now, this was done by intervention of two persons working with the community over a decade, and they brought a major change by putting people into the heart of the solution. Closer home, let me share with you an example where we similarly started a program taking lessons from all this experience around the world. And we piloted a program in Georgetown, a city that was in, in decay. And please watch this video. relationship with Think City. Uh, well, it, it is a, a, a very um, uh, 
uh, even though the the grant given by Think City is is uh, not really that much, but that really helps me to convince my committee uh, to to approve and get this uh, concept plan to restore the heritage building into real reality. The dome problem was a very major problem to this mosque. Uh, it was leaking very heavily until we have to shift the prayer at the back of the mosque. So we are very grateful that uh, in the end uh, uh, this uh, thing city came into the picture and uh, they were requested for the help and with their, uh, with their technical know-how, with their backup of the specialists which they had in the hand, they came into the mosque to do a helping hand. The success of this project actually is not determined by one or two person or by uh, it is not even by the grant, it's by the people who are involved in it. So it's not a one person thing, it's, it's a success made by a group of people with open mind. <laughs> This happened because communities took charge. The citizens in these places, through collaboration, partnership, came forward to bring change. The landlords, tenants working together brought change through small projects. Traders came together to bring change to their places of work. This is an example of Little India work, people coming together to work or engaging the public to know what they needed and knowing what they wanted. Going down to the ground and making sure it's inclusive, including bringing people who normally don't get featured. This is, this is a thieves market where the, we decided to also engage them as to knowing what their needs are. We also made a series of projects of reusing spaces that are never used before as part of a festival, and today we see in Georgetown Festival. Through a series of nearly 200 projects, today Georgetown has become alive. And these are projects done by individual persons, communities and businesses and so on. Through partnerships and collaboration, we have seen significant change. And for every dollar that we spent, we generated six dollars in return. Today Georgetown has arrived. It's been featured in the New York Times. It is one of those top 10 cities that you want to travel to, a major destination. And we believe this is not an incidental outcome. We believe that citizens all across Malaysia can bring change. Where we now started this program in Butterworth, Kuala Lumpur, Johor Bahru, and we believe this is something that we would like to continue. Let me share a story about how we are seeing the kind of responses that we have seen in these three different cities, whereby we have seen overwhelming co commitment from communities coming forward, businesses, to bring change to the cities. There are three specific projects that I'd like to highlight. And let me start with that. This is an example of how a printing press uh, that is abandoned for a while that has now transformed to become a major public space, a private space that's been transformed to be a public space. And an event was held to celebrate the Malaysia Day celebration where we had communities coming together to turn this private space into a public space, communities, children, bridging communities in Pantai Dalam and Bangsa. Uh, events were held, cultural performances. And people took ownership of reinventing the space. And this is a major public square in Medan Pasar that has been transformed to become a major event space that's emerging to be a major event space. Together with the city government, DBKL, we are now working to transform this particular place. Or in Butterworth, where we turned a public square, uh, which was a dump site, to become a global event space. This, this was a site for hosting the Butterworth Fringe Festival as part of the Georgetown Festival. Abandoned buildings were transformed to become exhibition spaces. Uh, people converged.
praises of Georgetown Festival for making this Batuat Fringe Festival. I can hear tourists are now talking about, oh, so Penang is also uh, not only an island, it is also a mainland. I can hear that. And we also then said, look, we can also work with city governments. And this is a partnership that we started with DBKL where we transformed a, a, a temporary pop-up park. We decided to host our partnership collaboration agreement signing ceremony here between the two buildings in DBKL. Uh, the pop-up park was put together, event was held, and based on this, we started a program now called a, po a signature pocket park program where all across the city's abandoned parks under acre is being transformed to become major public spaces to bring life to Kuala Lumpur. And this is work underway. And this and numerous other projects all across the city is bringing change. Citizens are stepping up to bring change through small projects, small interventions, and taking ownership of bringing an impact to the places where they live. We live in the cities, and we need to make our cities people, cities better, and we need to make our cities for all the people that are living in cities. Small things, I believe, will lead to transformation. Small things can be impactful. Small things are beautiful. And let me leave you with the last parting message. Small is not ugly, but small can be impactful. Small can be transformational. Thank you very much.